Where's the low voltage short and how do I find it? Today I'm going to be giving you tips to help you find low voltage shorts in the field faster and better. I'm going to be teaching you how to use your meter and check resistance on wires. I'm going to be teaching you the process of elimination that I use to be able to find that low voltage short. And I'm also going to be showing you some cool tools that I use in the field to help me. Before we start learning how to find low voltage shorts, Hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. Leave me a comment below and let me know who you are and where you're from. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad. Let's get started. When you are troubleshooting in the field at low voltage short, make sure you have one of these. This is the first great piece of advice that I have for you. It's a resettable fuse. You can find this online. I'll try to post a link in the description. Go check that out or you can find them in old used units. If you find one, they are golden. Please keep them. And I'm gonna tell you why. This is a typical blade fuse, right? This blade fuse is a one-time only fuse. So when this fuse pops, when you have a short, you have a blown fuse, then you have to replace it with a new fuse. You do not need to replace that blade fuse with another one until you use this to be able to find that short. Once you find the short, because this is resettable, it pops right out when there's a short, and then you can just reset it by pushing right here. Then you can get it fixed and then put the blade fuse back in. But have one of these resettables on your tool bag because that is what is going to help you not to blow all these fuses and have to replace and replace and replace until you find the short. So what is a fuse for? It's for protecting the transformer. The transformer, if you don't know what this is for, you need to check out my video on my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians. I got a video on relays and transformers, contactors and how they work. But the transformer is protected by the fuse. Anytime you have a transformer blown on a unit, do not just replace the transformer if it doesn't have an inline fuse. And brands that do not have an inline fuse, what are you doing? You have to have an inline fuse. They're fantastic. But this transformer here reduces the voltage from line voltage to control voltage, okay? So you have your 120 volts or your 240 coming in, and then you have your 24 coming out and that's what is used to control not only your relays your contactors but your thermostat so it's control voltage all right let's move on now i'm going to do a simple explanation of where this short could be the short can only be in four places it can only be in the thermostat wire the thermostat the indoor section or the outdoor section so indoor outdoor unit thermostat or thermostat wire so there's only four places where this short could be and all you got to do is you got to check your outdoor your indoor your thermostat wire and your thermostat and once you start to isolate each one of those you're going to be seeing if that fuse is popping and once you isolate each section once you find out that hey my fuse is no longer popping and i have the outdoor unit disconnected that's where my short is then you're going to be able to actually do a visual inspection or you might actually actually have to ohm out some coils and I'm going to show you how to do that to be able to find that short. Let me show you this example I've got and how the transformer is wired in series with the fuse and how that protects it. Let me show you this. So this is your thermostat. This is your indoor unit. Relay for heating, relay for fan and the transformer. And then this is your outdoor unit, right? Because all we have in the outdoor unit is a contactor, sometimes a board, and then a couple pressure switches, right? Here is how the fuse is wired for the transformer. You can see this is our secondary voltage, our common and our hot. This is our high voltage coming into our transformer. And you can see this common wire right here is going into a fuse, five amp fuse. And then it's going into the common of the thermostat wire to the thermostat, right? Okay, so we have our common and our hot. I'm gonna show you how that's wired right here on the hot, common, C and red, okay? Now, how do we find this short? We put the thermostat on, fuse blows immediately, right? Fuse blows immediately. Now we take our fuse out and let's put our resettable in. All right, so we now have our resettable in line with our transformers, common, okay? So now that we have this in position, finding a short is as easy as this. You see this wire, this low voltage wire leads to the outdoor unit? Turn my unit back on and disconnect this. Let's disconnect it. All right, so fuse is 
and we just disconnected the outdoor section so now the low voltage wiring is not going to the outdoor section now the fuse is no longer blowing right i just isolated the outdoor unit now now it's no longer blowing this fuse so i know the short is in this area now i'm going to show you how to ohm thermostat wire to see if the thermostat wire is bad now i've disconnected the wire from the outdoor unit and the indoor units air handler and i'm going to ohm out this piece of wire so the first thing i do was disconnect it and leave it open all right, so we need to turn on meter to ohms to be able to measure the resistance of that thermostat wire from the indoor to outdoor unit that we've got isolated. We're going to leave the wires not touching. We put our alligator clips on those wires and we should have no reading. Now, if we touch these two wires together, we should have a reading and that's how I'm going to do my check. OL, okay, so we have no reading. Now let's put these two wires together and see if that changes. Now we've got those two wires together and on the other end we're measuring the resistance and since they're connected we have continuity, we have a resistance reading. Now this is typically how I would measure the resistance and check and make sure that we didn't have a broken wire. You can do this in the field, you can use your meter this way. So this is isolating the thermostat wire from the indoor to the outdoor unit. Let's talk about some experience in the field and what you can find and what you need to do to be able to make sure that you find that short. Because again, sometimes it can be intermittent. When you get there, you replace the fuse and the unit works. And you're like, what? So make sure you go to the thermostat and you change the mode of operation from off to cooling and then from off to heating and then from auto on the fan to on. That way, if there's a short in the outdoor unit and it's only for cooling, then you'll know. Or if it's a short in the furnace, then you'll know. Typical problem areas I've found, of course, is for sensors or pressure switches in the outdoor unit. And whenever the unit turns on, it's vibrating and that wire moves just in the right spot against that copper. And that short happens and that fuse blows again. Or you have a contactor coil that's shorted. And every time you turn it in cooling, that contactor coil is energized and then boom, you have a fuse blown. Or it could be in a limit switch in the gas furnace and every time you turn it on heating or the gas valve shorted. Typically, I don't find gas valves often shorted, but contactor cools, definitely I find those shorted. Thermostats, definitely find those shorted. And you actually just have to take them off the wall and put another thermostat on to do that sometimes. That's your process of elimination. You take the thermostat off, put another one on. Now, if you have a, a thermostat that's burnt and it smells burnt, do not put another thermostat on the wall. Be careful with that one. But you can also have a thermostat wire that is shorted. A thermostat wire that looks perfectly fine, that has no nicks, no bites in it. It's not tore up at all, but the thermostat wire is shorted. So let's go check this contactor coil. I'll show you how to use a meter and do that as well. All right, so we're going to measure the coil of the contactor. I've got an alligator clip for each side of that coil there. And of course, I've got it isolated, so there's no wires touching anything else. We should have around 10 ohms. And look at that. Look at that. What we got here, around 10 ohms for that 24-volt contactor. So... This is what you're typically going to find for these residential 24 volt contacts is around 10 ohms. And if it's shorted, it's going to read way off. I hope you liked today's video. If you did, hit that like button before you leave. I hope that you are able to find the short in the field as an HVAC technician now that you've seen this video. If you have any questions, put those in the comments. I love questions. They lead to content. If you want help with your project, you want HVAC tech support, you want a contact for me so that I can provide you with answers to your questions, click that join button. Become a member. Let me know in the comment section. That say I joined. I'll give you my email. That can lead to my phone number. If you need it, I am here. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.